Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Devon Terrell, and welcome to another Help Me Devon tutorial. And today, in this Help Me Devon tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to get that analog board sound with one plugin. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to play you a song, I'm gonna bypass the effect uh, or the plugin back and forth, and I want you to hear the difference. Okay, so this is without the effect first. Listen close. hear that difference it feels richer there's more clarity it's an interesting sound it feels a lot fuller it's interesting that I even feel like there's more depth please make sure you comment like and subscribe that would help us so much what plugin are we using what is this effect what is happening in this mix I'm gonna show you so the plugin I'm showing you today is the NLS nonlinear summer and basically what this plugin does is Waves took three different vintage consoles and modeled them. Basically, we're getting a SSL console, an EMI console, and a Need console. Look closely. Spike is the SSL model console. Mike is the EMI model console. And Nevo is the Neve model console. Now, the way that you would set this up and structure this in your session is, I like to take every last one of the NLS channels and put it on all my tracks in my session. So as you can see, I put an NLS channel on every single track in my session, even my effects sends. Now, why did I do that? Basically, what I'm doing is, I am emulating how an analog board sounds. When you take each NLS channel and you put it on each particular track on your session, as far as the DAW is concerned, what you're doing is Waze modeled individual tracks on all of these boards. Each track has a difference, and that's what makes it so special. Maybe this one's just a tad bit warmer. Maybe this one has a little bit more clarity. Every track that they actually modeled has a different sound to it. And these small nuances and differences between the tracks is kind of what people go for when it comes to the analog sound. Now granted, these boards also have some type of saturation on them, so you're gonna hear some stuff get added to the signal that makes it sound pleasing to the ear. Now, when they modeled these, they used three different boards and each track from those boards so when you put it on your actual individual tracks, you're getting that difference between every single individual track. Hope that wasn't too confusing, but you get the picture, I hope. One thing I want you to keep in mind, look up here when you see spike 05, you see spike 05, realize when I click this, this is spike six, spike seven, spike eight. This is very important because each one of these tracks, like I told you, was modeled from the actual individual tracks that they're there. These differences is what makes that sound uh, sound authentic or special. So be careful when you're copying and pasting it because you could be copying the same exact sound track, Spike 05, to the next track, Spike 05, Spike 05, Spike 05. Just some, a little tidbit I just always wanted to tell people about with that. Okay. So with that being said, I'm pretty sure you just want to hear this thing for what it is. So let's go through the spike preset, the mic preset, and the Nevo preset. So you already heard the spike one, which was the SSL one. Let's try and listen to the uh, Nevo one, which is modeled after a knee board. So one thing I also want to point out is that I like to run my drive at about a three. So you see right here where it says drive, this basically is kind of working like saturation where it says how hard do you want to kind of hit, hit the board or how much harmonics do we want or how much saturation do we want. So I like to throw the drive up to about a three. I find that, that putting it at that three is a really nice sound that I'm actually getting like a, a sound that I can really, really um uh, 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 hear as far as what I'm going for. So I like to put the NLS channel on all my tracks at the very top and throw the drive to about a three for all of them, okay? Let's listen to what the uh, Nevo sound one sounds like. I also do it for this as well, but I use the NLS bus one for the actual master bus. This is our master bus. I'll explain that later. Let's listen to what the Nevo one sounds like. So let's take it off. Listen close. 
has a nice sound, it feels sweeter, which is classic uh, when it comes to uh, Rupert Neve's uh, techniques and, and the words he uses. It feels rich, it feels very clear and calm. It's not aggressive sounding, but rather it feels smooth and just right. I really like the Neve stuff. Uh, as far as that preset when it comes to R&B music because it really just makes everything sound lush and really smooth. So if you're looking for like the lush sound, it feels really calm and tame, but still has some of that warmth and that brilliance and clarity. I love the Nevo setting for that. The spike setting, I notice it feels ag more aggressive and it feels like it has a tad bit with a bit of whip to it as well. Could be wrong, but that's what my ears just have always perceived it as. Let's try out the other preset. So the other preset we have in here is what I'd like to call the monster. And this is the EMI uh, uh, emulation. So this is modeling an EMI board. And this, what you're going to notice is something very interesting. It does some real things to the... Um, the low end and the mids, it does some things. My bass, just pay attention to the bass and the low end and watch how this thing just kind of just pushes the low end of the entire thing uh, right to the front. Okay, without first. I love that one. Um, so that one is amazing for hip hop. I mean, it, it could be amazing for so many things, rock as well, just to kind of give it some of that warm grit uh, at that bottom end. And it kind of made the vocals even feel a little bit more focused uh, in the sound. And realize this is before you start adding any of your bells and whistles. This is like you getting a mix and bringing it into a console. And once you have it into the console, now you can tweak from there. And it's really dope. Those small little differences between each individual track is what's kind of giving you that feeling of I guess some type of feeling of separation and and um and richness and clarity and and things of that nature. Now, of course, this is emulation. Uh, this isn't actually uh that type of stuff, but it is a sound that is desirable, and it's nice to have that coming right in to my DAW. I highly recommend this thing. And the last thing I'll show you is as far as the bus. I like to use sometimes. Even if you don't want to use all the NLS channels on the uh, actual tracks, which I highly recommend you try, uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just put an NLS bus on the actual bus, on the master bus at the very end, and I'll just run the drive up a little bit. Let's actually see what that sounds like if I just run the drive up a bit. Check this out. Give some really tasteful uh, effects with it, and it's it it just has a an, an amazing sound. I feel like a lot of people don't use it um, for the most part. Um, I've seen some people like Jason Joshua uh, give some tips and tricks and stuff like that on it, but I really really highly recommend this if you're looking to kind of differentiate yourself and kind of get a warmer, more, more analog sounding sound. I know we hate the word warm, so I hope you enjoyed that. That was my tutorial on the NLS. Uh, Nonlinear summer. I really hope you enjoyed that. Please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Also, make sure you at Help Me Devon on Instagram, and please make sure you follow us on our Discord community with a bunch of aspiring engineers like yourself. Also, make sure you watch my Audio Nerds podcast every single Wednesday. I hope you enjoyed that, and until next time, you guys.